Beep! Oh, what is up, ninjas? My name is Sam World, and I am a cheapskate. Hiring a mixing engineer for $400? Forget about it. Now, if you're like me and you're producing on a laptop, obviously a laptop can help you mix better through the CPU power, etc., because you can run like 20 sausage fatteners. You know how we love that sausage. But also, the speakers on it can be utilized as a reference point for yourself to make your mixes sound better. Now, at first, I was a little bit like, yo, Sam, you're probably making shh out of your. So I decided to Google if people were just as stupid as me in utilizing laptop speakers as a reference point for your mixes. And it turns out there's a lot of articles and forum discussions of people doing similar things like utilizing bad speakers, grandma's old stereo in the bathroom, etc., in order to check their mixes. Now, one of the things for me with the laptop speakers here, guys, is that when I switch over, a lot of times I'll find either one have too much reverb. While it might sound good on these nice cream of the crop monitors, on laptop speakers, you're gonna hear like, wait, 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 the reverb might be a little too much. The atmosphere might be too loud. A lot of things stand out and the point of mixing again at the end of the day is to make sure your music sounds good on all avenues So why not do it? So what I found is that doing this I've got in a mix down that I kind of wanted a lot where the kick and the bass just sound very tight and, and sort of control the mix while everything sounds clean I was able to achieve that by switching over to laptop speakers and today I'm gonna show you how I do that on a little project I have here just so that we can kind of get the flow of things as always guys if you want to support my channel make sure to head over to evilsounds.com where you can find a lot of my sound design work and with that being said let's get started with this video all right guys, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do the mix here on the laptop speakers. This track is sort of mixed. There's still stuff about it that I don't like and I'm just gonna run it through the MacBook speakers and then I'll tell you guys what I hear on them. And from there, I'm gonna be doing changes. And then from there, we're just gonna check it out with the monitors to see where it's at in terms of that to just kind of keep it balanced. So with that being said, let's hit play. We'll go to the climax of the song here. So from there, I can make some pointers. Okay, so there's a couple of things that stood out when I did that playthrough right now on it. The first one was that some of the perks that are really wide, uh, the good thing about the MacBook Pro is that there's stereo to it for sure. Um, they were maybe a tad bit too loud where, I, you know, I want the vocal to be the center point. So whenever I hear those shots, it's a little, hmm, maybe they got to be lowered down. Uh, there's a flute that I use as a transition. I think that one is a little tad bit too loud. Uh, from there, we'll hear it again when we do those changes. So the first thing I'm gonna target is the flute, which should be in the effects section right here. So we're just gonna lower that down a bit. Okay, from there, the little shots on the sides. Do, do, do. That should be found in the drum section. So we're gonna go there. Um, it's gonna be the, these little shots. Yeah, so we're gonna lower that down. Maybe the reverb a bit down as well. a snap just a little bit on the piano you can definitely hear in the stereo signal there's something I don't like so maybe a little bit as well we're just gonna lower a tad bit the math 
faster, maybe I'll, I'll do a little bit of a reducement. Um, let's see what. Now, the thing with the laptop, you got to make sure is that you're not going to hear the low end as well. You will definitely hear some of the mid lows, but other than that, you're not going to hear everything else. String. Okay, so from there, I'm just going to switch over to my monitors right now just to gauge how everything is sounding with those changes that I've made. And from there, I'm going to keep or maybe correct some because, again, you're kind of trying to meet halfway with all these avenues. Okay, that part there with the flute is the one that we kind of reduced and it was the biggest one that bothered me. I like the change that we did because I think before that it was at 19. Negative 19, not 6. Yeah, and that, that was a good change that we did. So I think we're going to just bring it back to negative 25. All right, so then I'm going to switch over again to MacBook. Now, I'm utilizing this. Um, I show you how to card to do it, but you guys are going to be doing it, obviously, in the preferences. And again, that's kind of like the deal we're doing with it is we're just kind of switching over and over until we kind of get it to where we like it to sound like. Now, again, right now, I feel like it might be a little bit too bright, so we'll see how it sounds like on the MacBook speakers. One of the biggest things from the MacBook speakers that I get is the fact that you can definitely pick out if you have too many highs uh, on them. Like, you can dial in that, like, 2K all the way up to, we'll say, maybe 4 5K really well. From there, obviously, your low end, that's a whole different other story. Uh, you're going to have to use monitors or your headphones. Headphones can go super low. So, again, there's different avenues for you to kind of use. Okay, we're going to go back a little bit to other parts of the song. Uh, something weird happened there. Picked it up. Just this thing here. Move it. You're just lucky. So I'm going to switch over again to monitors, and that is like the key here. So I'm just going here, MacBook speaker off, Scarlett 2i2. I'm only doing this again because I'm recording a video, so I have to make sure to do it this way. Uh, from there, we're just going to play it out, and I'm going to hear those changes again.
so the open hat a little bit, maybe two match. And then there's these toms that I have, which I'm going to lower down a bit more. Uh, and then from there, I'll end the video. So, but you kind of get the idea, guys. You're probably hearing this going like, okay, what's well, doing that? I'm hearing on MacBook speakers. But the idea of it is that you're going to be switching back and forth in order to do these changes. And as you do it, you're going to notice stuff about the way that you mix. You might be like, on my monitors, I tend to mix really heavy. Or I can't get that kind of mix that I want. And then from there, you switch to MacBook speakers, you do some change, and you go back, and you're like, holy shit. Now, it might be just that the fact that your ears are changing. You know, when you go MacBook speakers, the, the, the acoustics change a lot. Obviously, you don't have as much energy in the low end and stuff, and you're hearing more of the highs. But as you switch over to monitors, you know, your mix might sound good, and you're just like, whoa, it sounds different, because you're getting a different perspective. Again, uh, all right, so the toms are just going to lower them down. I can't I think that's the good part. And then we're just going to switch back. Now, this whole video is just me switching between one and <laughs> But hopefully the idea and the theory and the execution makes sense to you enough for you to utilize it when you're making your own music. Now in the song, there's a lot of noise. And when I go on MacBook speakers, I know that noise is too loud because I'm able to hear it through there, the, the noise level of the whole song. But when I have it on monitor, it's a little different. So again, uh, essentially what I'm doing here is I'm utilizing both to get the mix that I want. Now, I do feel like maybe it might be a little too bright here and there. So maybe I have to ease up on my solid EQ on the master, just a tiny bit, but you get the idea there. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully the theory makes sense and hopefully seeing it kind of been done helps in you executing it. I'm always looking for ways to teach you guys new and fresh things that a lot of people don't talk about on YouTube. You know, that's the biggest thing. And these are the things that I'm actually doing that I feel are helping me improve a lot when it comes to stuff. The life of a music producer, guys, is always learning. You're never going to know everything. There's always ways, different ways to achieve a goal. And it's just up to you to kind of build that and go with like, you know what? I like this technique, Sen. I'm going to fucking use it next time. Or you might be like, yo, Sen, you're talking out of your ass. I think you're, you, you dr you're drinking too much. In that case, I'll give you something. I am. But uh, at the end of the day, again, you get to decide whether this is something you would like to do or not. I'm just here presenting the information to you. But with that being said, evilsounds.com, support the channel. Peace out. Take care. And you guys have a great one.